Good morning, or afternoon, or evening. We're going to finish chapter four, which uh, will be the third of this lecture series. We're going to be talking about domain names. Uh, most of you already know what a domain name is. It is a uh, equivalent of a telephone number or an address. On the screen you'll see some examples, google.com, amazon.com, pit.edu. And the big issue in terms of protecting intellectual copyright or trademark is a term called cyber squatting. Cyber squatting means that a person will register a domain name with the intention to resell the domain name to a party that has a claim to that name. So for example, if I meet somebody who I think is going to become famous one day, I can register their name and then in five years when they become famous, I will require that they pay me X amount of dollars to get their domain for themselves. Um, this is one of those situations that you have to be pretty savvy to know. It's, it happens a lot in politics, for example, and um, with young Hollywood types. Cyber squatters also do this with names that could be confused for a particular name. The idea is to profit by jumping on a domain name that somebody will want. Now one of the most famous um, ways that this is done, and this is not really cyber squatting as much as taking advantage, but years ago whitehouse.gov was registered and you would have thought that the government would have also taken over whitehouse.com. Well, they didn't. So some enterprising pornographer jumped on whitehouse.com and turned it into a pornography site. So what happens is somebody will go online looking to see something via the government and they type in whitehouse.com and instead of getting Obama's face, they get pornography. So this is one of those examples where if you're savvy, you can jump on these things ahead of time. Other examples of cyber squatting, um, Julia Roberts, very famous actress, in 2000 she had a little bit of fame but she wasn't overly incredibly famous yet and she went to register her name, JuliaRoberts.com, and discovered somebody else had already purchased it. She had to sue to get control of her domain name. In 2000 a similar thing happened when the BBC won back the rights to their URL bbcnews.com after it was registered by a cyber squatter. And then as recently as 2008, Verizon won a lawsuit because somebody had gone ahead and registered various and sundry combinations including myverizonwireless.com, iphoneverizonplans.com, and verizoncellular.com. The thing that these kids or these people are doing is they want to make money by jumping on something that a company hasn't already thought of. At the core of the dispute involving cyber squatters is the freedom of speech versus the legitimate claims of trademark holders. So if for example you are just a regular old guy in school and you don't register your name as a domain name, but in five years you suddenly are launched into overnight success because of something you did or invented. Well, at that point, you need to go make sure that your name is available and to buy it. Um, but if you don't, isn't that really just freedom of speech, somebody else buying it because you haven't thought of it yet? The other issue is if somebody registers the name www.mcdonaldskills.com, is that an editorial perspective, i.e. free speech, or does it violate the McDonald's trademark? And again, what this does is it puts into question how people have fair use of a particular trademark. So what is the government doing about this? Well, remember ICANN, the organization that manages um, who is allowed to register domain names? They've handled a dispute process, or they've developed a dispute process. And it's called the Uniform Dispute Resolution Procedure, or UDRIP. It sets the criteria if someone has the right to a domain name. 
So the legal standard. So far, the legal decisions have come down on the side of free speech. Again, we're the United States of America, and free speech is one of the most important tenets of our government. Now, if the domain name is confusing and misleads the consumer, that is when the legal standard will not hold up for free speech. Um, an example of a celebrity not winning is recently Lady Gaga filed a suit claiming that she should be able to control Lady Gaga org. She already owns LadyGaga.com. LadyGaga.org is actually a fan-run website. These are all the folks who worship Lady Gaga, her little monsters, and they put together a website to worship their queen. Um, but she still wanted control. So she went to court and she lost because the site clearly states that it's fan-run in other words, it's not trying to mislead the consumer, and it's not trying to make any money off of her name. All they're doing is just worshiping Lady Gaga. And they have identified four elements of bad faith. Number one, the domain name was registered for the purpose of selling it for more than out-of-pocket expenses. Again, it's not that they don't want to make a profit, they just don't want extortion level profit. Number two, the domain buyer has demonstrated a consistent pattern of registering domain names to prevent someone else from owning it. So when you have somebody who will register 500 different domain names all related to a particular celebrity or politician, that's pretty clear that they're just hoping that they will be able to make some money off of these. Number three, the domain name was registered to disrupt a competitor. So, for example, if instead of Starbucks.com, it was starsandbucks.com, that is clearly meant to pull traffic away from Starbucks. Because so many of us, we type in the first three or four letters, Google automatically completes it for us, and then we just pick whatever we see first. So that's something that would um, disrupt the competition. And last, number four, the domain name has been registered to intentionally cause confusion. And again, you know, a Mac, M-A-C Donalds, instead of Mick, M-C Donalds, is something that would definitely cause confusion. Now the government has also put in a act called the Anti-Cyber Squatting Protection Act, uh, Consumer Protection Act, otherwise known as the ACPA. This was in passed in 1999 in Congress. Um, and it basically says that a person is liable for civil action, i.e. they can be sued for money, if a cyber squatter does one of two things. One, has a bad faith intent to profit from the domain name, or two, registers and or uses a domain name that is confusingly similar to another. So it's pretty much redundant to what the UDRP does, but now we have an official government Congress approved law. So together they work to try and prevent these kind of things happening. The ACPA also protects a person's private name from bad faith res registration. So, for example, <clears throat> let's say that one of you decide that you want to buy a domain name that says, Miss Chaken sucks. Well, in that kind of a case, it could be considered free speech, but because I'm a private person and a private citizen and I'm not a celebrity, I have the right to buy that name back. It does allow a dona domain name to mock or criticize as long as there is no intent to commercialize the site. And the couple examples that I gave you, and you can look these up later, um, Obamasucks.ws and in uh, you know fair and equal treatment, Mitt Romney is stupid .weebly.com. These two men are both politicians, widely known. So buying their names is not such a big deal because they are very well known. They're not private citizens. They've gone out of their way to publicize who they are. 
So when you have that kind of a scenario, you're going to have a little bit more latitude. So that finishes up chapter four, and we're going to have our quiz in the next class period. If you have any questions, make sure you email me or text me. And otherwise, thank you very much.